How's everyone doing today? My name is Yupari and I'd like to welcome you to another portrait drawing tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be demonstrating uh, the profile view which is uh, essentially the side view of a model's face. The beginning of this drawing will start out with a uh, loose simple sketch with the medium vine charcoal then I'm going to wipe it clean uh, with my paper towel. Then I'm going to go into uh, my pastel pencils here. One is a burnt umber color and the other is a white. And I have a shish kebab stick there for my uh, vertical and horizontal lines. And I'm also going to be uh, sharpening these pencils periodically uh, with a pencil sharpener. And the paper that I will be using is a toned recycled uh, medium grained paper. I like to work a little bit with a, a somewhat of a medium textured paper. Alright, getting started here with the drawing. The first thing I want to figure out is the overall placement of the pose. So I want to know where exactly on the surface of my paper I'm going to be placing uh, the outer structure of the head and since this is going to be a a profile drawing I really want to get the gesture and the tilt of the pose as accurately as possible but I'm still trying to be relatively uh, loose with my mark making uh, notice I'm starting out with just a loose sketch of the big shapes and I'm going to be creating uh, essentially what I like to call a ghost and the ghost just means that it's going to, uh, I'm going to wipe this off of the surface uh, and then go on top of it with uh, my more permanent uh, material, which is going to be my uh, burnt umber colored pastel pencil. Uh, but essentially the ghost is going to be uh, the remnants of the image that you will be able to see uh, a little bit lightly onto the surface. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, when I wipe this off. So now as I start to wipe you see now that I have just now the light marks or the light indications of what used to exist under it and that's what I refer to as a ghost. And so I'm going to be starting out with the eye socket working my way uh, around the eye socket structure all the way up to the forehead trying to establish exactly where these structures are placed. Especially with a profile view, uh, I like to have uh, my top and my bottom most portions of the head well established, but then really quickly on, uh, try to establish and pinpoint the structure of the eye socket. And that eye socket structure starts out very simply, just as that little triangle shape that you see. Um, but that pretty much tells me where the entire eye socket is going to be placed. And now I have placed uh, where I think that the nose is going to go, just a, sim a simple line for the uh, bottom of the nose, and then I'm going to um, draw a large line through the glabella all the way down to the chin. Uh, and that's the line, that's the main axis, if you will, um, the center line of the face. Now the face is in profile, so the center line is a very predominant line here, a very important line, and it's the line that I'm going to use kind of as a scaffolding to build uh, the muzzle and the chin on top of. Uh, the muzzle is the region, uh, the structure of the face that uh, encompasses the mouth. And I'm going to uh, further subdivide my lines and shapes now into more exacting shapes, but I'm not going to uh, break them apart too much. I still want to keep uh, each shape very simple and easy for myself to understand and simple and easy to move as well in case I make any mistakes in the future here. Notice how I subdivide these shapes. I started off, uh, let's look at the nose. Uh, I started off with just a simple triangular looking uh, shape and it's pretty much a place marker. Uh, remember how I started off the eye socket structure is pretty much a simple triangular structure as well. I tend to use a lot of triangles in my uh, block ins. I try to use a lot of simple uh, and easy to understand geometric structures because if I don't 
uh, keep the drawing simple if I introduce too many curves right away. It's kind of hard for me to uh, properly gauge uh, the placement and the peaks of convexity of each and every uh, shape. The uh, peak of convexity is, uh, so let's look at the left side of the face. The peak of convexity is going to be uh, the nose. It's going to, it's what's sticking out uh, the furthest to the left and each little curve has some type of high point and low point. So the peak of convexity is the high point. And Using straight lines helps me to relate these points to one another. Notice how I uh, used the vertical line from the tear duct to the neck uh, with my shish kebab stick, and that uh, helped me place that eye even uh, better into the eye socket by relating a straight line from the corner of the tear duct to the neck. And also, Paying attention to the angle of the jawbone as well. Um, and that's a pretty important uh, factor of profile views as well. A lot of people leave the jawbone for last, but uh, that's not really something that I like to do, though uh, it will be in flux, like it will move uh, every now and then. Uh, but it's important to know where the jawbone is going to be placed relative to the uh, a large center line of the side of the face and the eye socket as well. Now remember that large line that I mentioned earlier, that large line going through the uh, glabella across to the chin, uh, the center line essentially, and that is a very uh, important tool of which I'm now going to build the lips on top of. And so I'm adding a uh, little extra lines here and there. Uh, I have one now for the uh, indentation of the top lip uh, meeting the bottom lip and now I'm starting to uh, put more lines into the the nose and I'm still trying to keep myself rather uh, loose uh, yet uh, specified with the shapes that I'm applying onto the surface and I'm oftentimes going to uh, make a mark, put a mark down, and think that it's in the right spot. Uh, but sometimes it's not always in the right spot, so that's why it's important to uh, work in such a way that you have uh, clarity in your mind. You have a certain target that you're trying to reach, and for me, uh, I oftentimes have to go back to the ghost. Uh, remember the ghost is the uh, the image a light image of what was previously on the paper. So I ghosted out the nose again. I'm going to be using the ghost a lot actually to uh, further refine and further articulate uh, the outside shape of the face because the outside shape of the face of a profile view is uh, extremely important to try to uh, get the right type of shape, the right type of outline for it. The outside of the face and even in uh, in a painting that's also pretty pretty important although with paint you can work a little bit more broadly than with a uh, sharp pencil like this one um, but trying to get that shape that outside shape as accurate as possible doesn't always happen right away uh, oftentimes I have to step back see mistakes and then go back to the ghost and build on top of the ghost and it's nice to be able to leave the ghost there so that I can keep track of my progress. Pressing down harder onto where I think that the uh, pupil is going to be placed now I'm able to uh, I'm able to manage the calligraphy of the uh, drawing as well and a lot of drawing uh, also has a lot to do with calligraphy uh, calligraphy being uh, the way that you're applying the mark onto the paper uh, I'm pressing down a lot harder in areas of more attention uh, more tension uh, like the crease of the pupil uh, right underneath of the upper eyelid and now I'm starting to uh, place the the eyelid following uh, in my mind where I think the eyeball is going to be wrapping around uh, the eye socket. And I'm also trying to picture the placement of the tear duct, though 
you can't really see the tear duct. I'm using a vertical line to try to figure out where exactly that tear duct is uh, relative to a horizontal and a vertical axis. So I'm really thinking of how the eyeball is sitting uh, within that eye socket and how the eyelid is wrapping around the eyeball to uh, provide protection. So I'm really thinking about the three-dimensionality of this structure, even though it's a two-dimensional uh, drawing, a two-dimensional uh, pencil drawing. And now I'm going to be uh, placing a value for the uh, depth of the tear duct. And now there's a very a predominant dark light indicating the uh, curvature of the, the ca concavity of the eye socket as it wraps around uh, closer and closer to the tear duct. Uh, concavity meaning it's turning away from the light. Uh, hence that's why I'm really making it much darker as we are uh, approaching the pupil of the eye because that region is facing the light a lot less. Using the eraser helps to um, not only create the ghost, I mean that's how I create the ghost with the eraser, but it also helps to soften a line. Uh, so I soften the line for the eyebrow and now I'm going to be carving out a more specific shape for the eyebrow and I'm still thinking about how that eyebrow uh, is wrapping around the uh, the tip of the eye socket and uh, now it's it's eyebrows are it can be pretty superficial and may not actually be wrapping around the structure of the um, the eye socket but I'm kind of picturing it as if it is wrapping around the structure of the eye socket and I believe it is in this image uh, the eye socket is indicating where that uh, the top of the tear duct is going to be and now with my uh, white pastel pencil I put in the highlight uh, for the eye and I put in a few dark lights now for the uh, zygomatic bone and the mandible. The zygomatic bone being the cheekbone and the mandible being the bottom of the jaw. Just a few little dark lights here. And then um, I'm going to be sprinkling on some more of the lights onto the uh, high lit regions of the face now. And the way that I'm uh, applying these uh, lights is that I'm very lightly with a sharpened pencil. Uh, moving around the surface of the paper very very lightly and then uh, gradually applying more pressure towards the lighter regions of the face. Applying more pressure with this pencil allows me to uh, make a much lighter mark, uh, pretty much opposite of the uh, burnt umber colored pencil that I was using uh, before. Uh, so just putting uh, little bits of light here and there. Uh, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to put too many highlights on uh, because then the picture may look a little metallic. So just uh, very sparingly applying uh, the light in uh, such a way that I'm not going to be applying it everywhere, but I'm just picking and choosing uh, the top most planes uh, that will be facing the light the most and I will be using the tone of the paper itself to do all the work uh, for the middle lights and some of the half tones for me as well. And that would have been the end of that video but now uh, what happens when you have some drawing mistakes? After standing back for a little while I noticed that I had an error in the placement of the chin and the mouth. And so now I want to uh, locate an area onto the face that I can hold fixed relative to that uh, region that is an error. And that uh, for me is going to be the, uh, the peak of convexity for the tip of the nose. That uh, furthest area to the left of the nose is actually pretty close to where the chin needs to go. Uh, notice the drastic change now uh, in the angle of the mouth. A completely horrific mistake uh, was created there. And so now I'm going to be uh, picking and choosing areas to hold fixed. And then I'm going to be applying uh, my changes uh, by relating the, the area of the face that needs to be fixed 
relative to the fixed points that I'm going to maintain. And so the fixed point is basically going to be uh, the the tip of the nose, uh, so that that point of which the nose is furthest to the left of the surface, and the entire eye socket structure itself. That eye socket structure is going to be planted. I'm going to keep it there and relate everything based on it. Now all of this means that my main line, remember that main line that I was talking about, uh, going from the glabella, the glabella being the, uh, the middle between the two eyes, between the two eye sockets. So that line from the glabella all the way to the chin must have been in uh, the wrong angle. And so that's why I, I'm going to be pretty much ghosting now the nose yet again, uh, ghosting the mouth as well. Uh, ghosting everything uh, so that I can come back with a fresh eye and try to re-establish exactly uh, that center line which is the uh, the predominant line of which the mouth and the nose and the chin is going to emerge from. And remember drawing is just a series of corrections. A drawing is just a series of corrections. As long as you keep your shapes simple and you keep your uh, method easy to understand for you, uh, then you will be able to uh, fix any kind of mistakes like that. And it may take several attempts. I'm going to uh, ghost out the nose. Uh, I'm going to ghost out the nose, the mouth, and the chin uh, probably several times until I get them just right. Uh, relative to the eye socket and relative to that furthest left peak of where I think that the nose is going to be placed. And so it does take quite a bit of patience and um, caring with respect to the drawing. I know that it may be kind of frustrating to get it wrong uh, the first time or the second time or the third time. But as long as you keep your shape simple and easy for you to understand, making these corrections is just a matter of, okay, it's in the wrong place now. Let me move it a little bit here. Oh, it's in the wrong place there. And let me move it a little bit there, a little bit of tinkering until you get it just right relative to your fixed points. Those fixed points should be areas that you do not want to change. And that eye socket is planted. I am not moving it at all. I'm going to be adding some uh, darker accents here and there. Um, but for the most part, that area is going to be held fixed. And here we are now. We just placed the half tones now for the nostril and to the bottom of the lips back again. Remember, we had we had a value for the lips uh, before. I had to ghost it out and make the corrections. Um, but I also noticed that I needed to increase uh, the volume of the lips as well. Uh, the lips were a little bit larger um, than they. They needed to be a little bit larger than they were previously, so I added a little bit more volume to the lips. And I'm also adjusting the angle of the jawbone ever so slightly now. Just a little adjustment, uh, moving it up perhaps even um, half of a millimeter, a tiny little adjustment. And remember in a portrait, uh, the smallest the smallest things could make almost all the difference. and Keeping your uh, technique simple and easy to understand is uh, going to be crucial in finding out exactly what uh, those small corrections need to be. Using my vertical line now, I'm going to uh, double check that those corrections are indeed correct, and they are now. The chin is definitely very, very close on a vertical uh, relative to that farthest part of the nose that I kept fixed. And I'm still kind of ghosting uh, smaller areas here and there. I ghosted out the uh, the area of the glabella, the glabella being, uh, remember, uh, the area in between the two eye sockets, but in this case it's uh, the area directly to the left of the eye, uh, so that I can 
uh, go in with my sharpened pencil now and create a more fine line for where I think uh, the actual contour of the face is going to be. And that pretty much completes the corrections that I needed to uh, make onto the drawing. Uh, remember, a drawing is a series of corrections and if anything, a drawing is just meant to gather information. Though drawings are very beautiful in their own right, I see kind of I see drawing as a tool uh, towards painting. I feel like uh, I personally am a better painter. Uh, I become a better painter the more I perfect my ability to draw. My ability to problem solve uh, in drawing helps me tremendously in painting so that that's why it's important to uh, have a lot of patience with these drawings and to uh, keep them simple easy and workable but also as accurate as you can uh, so that that kind of accuracy uh, can also be portrayed in your painting as well that being said, I encourage you to do many studies, uh, simple portrait studies in this manner. If you find some kind of a uh, toned paper out there like the one that I showed you and uh, work with a soft vine charcoal onto a, a medium textured toned paper and then um, go into uh, something more permanent like uh, this uh, burnt umber pencil with the, uh, the white uh, just to Put on the highlights. All you really need are just a few sprinkles of light, uh, your shadow, and your half tones, and you can create an image such as this one. I wish you all the best in your artistic endeavors, and thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope it helps you out.